In this short video, we're going to show you how easy it is to create flat shapes and zero planes in Aspire. So to start with, we've got a set of vectors and we're going to use these to demonstrate how to use the flat shape option. So we'll start with this star. So we're going to select this star here. We're going to go over into our modeling tools and we're going to use this first icon to create a flat shape. When we click on that, that will enable us to create flat shapes. So we're just going to change our view here. Okay, and you'll see in the 3D view, our vector is selected and we've got this handle here. Okay, so when I hover over the handle, we can see we currently have a zero. We've got no shape in here. And if I click on the handle with my left mouse button and then start to pull that up using my mouse, you can see that I'm able to create a flat shape. And the numbers that you are seeing there is the height at which that flat shape is at. And when I let go, that will create that flat shape. I can see that is at 0 0.3171. If I wanted to be more specific, I could actually type in a value. So I could make that a quarter of an inch, press enter, and then that will apply that there for me. Over in the form, if we wanted, we could give this component a name by typing a name in. We can alter the combine mode of this component. So we adjust how it combines with other components that we may have in our job. And you can hit apply to accept that name and close out. Then you've got your first shape created. And if we go to our components tab, we can see our component listed in level one here. It's named star and we can turn the visibility of that off or we could switch that on again. Now that we've created our shape, we can actually move it around if we wanted to. We can rotate it, we can resize it. And we have access to lots of different editing tools. And as part of that, we can still further edit the actual height of this by adjusting the height value here. So again, that same icon. And again, if we wanted to be more specific, we could go in there and then type in a value that we want. So now let's have a look at another example. So I'm going to take this circle here. I'm going to go into our design tab and we'll go back into the create flat shape option. Okay, here we're just going to create our shape. Okay, so you can see we've got something strange going on here. Okay, and this is the way that this component is combining with other components that we have in our job. So at the moment it's currently set to add. Okay, so if we want that to blend in with the star, then we'll just set that to merge and then that will just blend in nicely there. Okay, so you can see how that looks. Now we also have the ability to make further adjustments to our newly created shape using this button here. Okay, so again, we've got the ability to adjust our combine modes just like we do over in the form. We also have the options to apply a fade or a tilt. So a fade will fade a component down by a percentage. And the way that we do that is we simply click to accept the fade option. Okay, and I'm actually going to just put this down the top view here. And what we need to do is we need to specify our anchor point. So where we want the, our fade to start and where we want the fade to end. Okay, so I want to fade from the left to the right. So we need to use the set option here. And then I click over anywhere that I want to start my fade. So I want that to start on the left hand side of our circle. And you'll see we've got an anchor there with the number one next to it. And when I click that, you'll see that number's now changed to a number two, which the software is telling me I need to now select my second anchor point, which is where I want to fade down to. So if I want to fade from left to right, I'm going to go over to the right hand side and then I'm going to click that in place. Okay, we'll just tilt our view again. Okay, and maybe I'll just use the twiddle here and you can see that our component is fading down from the left over to the right hand side. Okay, and it's doing that 50% of its current height. And we can see that because we've got that set in our form here. And if we use that slider, we can increase that. And you can see as we're increasing that, uh, that's automatically updating for us there in our 3D view. So we've got lots of control over the fade. Now, if you didn't want the fade, just uncheck that and then it will just reset back to its default setting of its just standard base height. We also have the ability to adjust to create a tilt. 
in which case it's quite the opposite of the fade so um, what we do is we apply a tilted base height okay so here if we apply a tilt so again let's just go back to the top view here let's say I wanted to tilt that from the left to the right I use the set option here click over here so again I've got an anchor with the number one click there and now I need to essentially choose the direction at which I want to tilt my part and then I can click to create the second anchor point and if we just go to the front view here and then here I'm able to move my component properties form here in which case the way we create our tilt is by angle and I can use this slider and you can see it's going to create an angled plane for us or a tilt based on the angle that we set in here and you can be precise if you wanted to if you wanted to type in a value you could do that and press enter to accept that and if you didn't want your tilt there you can just undraw the tilt like so so you're just left with a standard flat shape and again if you wanted to give that a name you can just type that in like so apply that and now if you wanted to create another shape you can simply whilst in our functionality here we can just click on our next vector uh, in which case we can then go ahead and create another shape so here let's just pull on that like so here's my newly created shape and then we can just close out here and then back into our component tree we can see our three components we can also see them here from our levels drop down which is handy if you didn't want to come out of your design tab and it's worth noting as well that uh, once you've created your components they actually have no relation to the vector anymore and so for example if I delete that I can take it I can move it around but I can also make edits to the actual form itself so if I press N on the keyboard you can see I'm able to access node edit mode for the actual component and if I move any of these points around you can see that I'm editing this on the fly and we're getting instant updates using the shape that we've created uh, at the same height and you can see we can make further edits there. So now we're going to look at one final example and that is how to create a zero plane. So a zero plane is where we create a plane that has zero height. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take everything and we're just going to delete everything there. Let's put that back to the top view. So to create a zero plane, come over to your modeling tools. And then before you click on the create flat shape, if you hold down shift and then click, that will create you your zero plane, which you can access here. It's also worth noting that if you are in the 2D view, you won't actually see anything. However, there has been a zero plane layer created and when you click on that you'll see that we've got the grayscale version of your zero plane but by default we just hide that uh, just so it doesn't obscure any vectors or any other components that you may want to view in the 2D view. And so having a zero plane in view not only gives you a visual cue to where zero is on your job, but in modeling operations where you have negative shapes in them, having a zero plane in place will help prevent some possible issues that we might have when we come to machine negative models. And you can learn more about that in the how to create a carved and dish recess videos that we'll link in the related videos section. So that completes this video on how to create flat planes in Aspire. Thank you for watching.